does it behave on T1 and T2 signal intensity? Say if it was a fibrothecoma of the ovary, on T1 and T2 weighted images, it is low signal intensity, correct? So why is the fibrosis in the liver here high signal intensity? Can anybody think of that? Think of why? Because this is active inflammation. This is inflamed fibrosis. This is hydrated fibrosis. Like calcium on MR is always, almost always low signal intensity. And yet, every so often you see a calcific lesion on CT that is high signal intensity on MR. And the reason for that is it is hydrated calcium. And if you look at literature, there are a few papers that describe that, talk about that. Similarly, intervening structure, this linear band between the lesions are high signal, low signal intensity on T1, high signal intensity on T2. And the reason is that this is active inflammation going on in this fibrosis. This fibrosis is in progression, not complete, and that is why it is a high signal intensity. On arterial phase, everything becomes iso-intense and does not demonstrate washout. This is, by definition, a regenerative or a dysplastic nodule. This is not an issue. It does not demonstrate washout. Let's go to what a dysplastic nodule plus an HCC looks like. Can everybody appreciate the lesion? Which segment is it in? Which segment is it in? <coughs> The V. Yes. Which segment is it in? No. Well, you can talk. You can talk. Which segment is it in? Five, six, seven, eight. This is segment seven. Can you appreciate the lesion? Can you draw it out? Okay. Okay, look at the lesion. In phase versus out of phase, what is happening in the lesion? It's a change of signal. Yeah, drop of signal. Drop of signal. <coughs> on T2 weighted images, you can again see the lesion. Now look at the entire lesion here, and a part of it actually demonstrates enhancement, correct? On arterial phase? And the part that is demonstrating enhancement demonstrates washout, correct? Is it good or bad? Yeah. Bad, exactly. So, you know, we called up, I remember I was reading this case with my attending fellow, and we called the surgeon and, you know, the, the alpha fetoprotein was not elevated. You know, that, and, and, but that doesn't concern us. We never know that until we call and inquire. Just based on images, you know, we said that this is a, a dysplastic nodule with an HHCC in it. And he said, why do you say that? I said, it demonstrates washout. And he said, why do you say that it uh, is a dysplastic nodule with an HCC? And I said, because not all, of us not all of it demonstrates enhancement. This part does not. And not all of it demonstrates washout. So there are two entities here. So he went, went in and, and took it out. And it actually was dysplastic nodule with HCC. And he calls me up. And he said, for a change, you were right. <laughs> I said, thank you so much. But, you know, don't wait for the world, uh, world's appreciation, you know. You do, do a fantastic job, take pride in that. Someday people will acknowledge. Liver lesions in cirrhosis, as I said, regenerative and dysplastic nodules. T1 weighted images, it is variable. T2 weighted images, hypo-intense. If it becomes hyper-intense on T2, you sort of worry. But then again, margin and washout are the two things that you can hang your hat on. Arterial phase. Hypo, iso to liver, delayed, similar to liver, no washout. Tell them I'm lecturing, I'm busy. <laughs> Additional features, you can have cirrhosis, <coughs> history of cirrhosis or hepatitis, you may or may not know. Next, lesion. Can we draw it out? Yes, we cannot. Look how it behaves. So on T1 weighted images, you can see the lesion hypo-intense. On T2 weighted images, it is sort of subtle, hyper-intense. On arterial phase, it definitely enhances. Correct? What happens on the portal venous phase? 
washes out. And what happens on EU West images, 20 minute delay, it does not take it to EU West. So it is a worrisome reason. The patient actually had cholorectal cancer and this was a metastatic disease. Pathology proven. Okay. So, metastasis versus hemangioma. I should have actually removed this and asked you the question, but it is obvious now. Look at the hemangioma. Peripheral nodular incomplete circle of enhancement around it, which progressively fills in. Look at the metastasis. It is almost complete. You could argue that it is almost complete and there is no progressive filling in. Correct? That is how you distinguish those. Metastasis usually irregular in shape as I said because they are infiltrated by nature. T1 usually hypo intense. You can see hyper intense lesions in melanoma or if they are mucinous or hemorrhagic lesions. T2 weighted hyper intense heterogeneous and a blurry edge. There is a blurry edge around this region. If you look too closely for too long, you might get epilepsy. I'll change the slide. Metastasis, as I said, arterial phase, hypovascular, can have peripheral thick rim around it. Hypervascular are seen, may be homogeneous if they are less than 2 cm and heterogeneous if they are greater than 2 cm in size. You can see perilesional enhancement in pancreatic and <coughs> colorectal metastasis as we saw here, perilesional enhancement. But then again it will be complete and it will not progressively fill in. And that is where you know you can reliably characterize it and it, can, it will demonstrate irregular peripheral washout. Okay, so next lesion. Is it well-defined or ill-defined? Can you draw it out? Ill-defined. Excellent. You see guys, it's not rocket science. <laughs> Honest to God, it is not rocket science. Next time you look at an MR, just think of two things. What are the two things? <laughs> Washer. Oh man, that's the wrong answer. Think of me and my lecture. That's what you told me. Not you. <laughs> no, 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 I'm only joking. I just created this, you know. But yeah, margin. <laughs> That's what life is all about, you know? That is what life is all about. Okay. So, T2 weighted images, you see the lesion and you also see what else? What is happening here? This is a coronal image. Intrapatic biliary dilatation. The lesion is heterogeneous, remains heterogeneous, correct? <clears throat> that was like two days later, man. Okay. So how, much, how much more delay do you want? <laughs> so the lesion is heterogeneous. There's something going on in the biliary tract. And the lesion remains ill-defined and progressively fills in. And there are other lesions in the liver as well. What do we think it could be? There were three lesions in the list, initial list that I showed. Three worrisome lesions. Can anybody remember? HCC. Yeah, that was one of them. Mets. Yes. Angiocarcinoma. Absolutely. Cholangiocarcinoma. Cholangiocarcinoma. Malignant tumor of bile duct origin. See, that's why I said, what else is going on here? And then you see other lesions as well. Okay. T1 weighted variable iso2 hypo T2 heterogeneously hyper intense. Arterial phase, hypo-enhancing, delayed phase, heterogeneous, delayed enhancement. You almost always have history of ulcerative colitis, PSE, colidocal cyst, colicosis syndromes, one of these. This can be a little bit of a challenge. But as I said, life does not consist of holding good cards, but to play a poor hand well. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Please feel free to ask at any time. Some more lesions. Okay, are we ready? Everybody with me? Okay. What do we think 
Is this good or bad? You've got a nodule here. See that? Two different types of arrows. <coughs> so you've got a nodule here that is almost enhancing to the same extent as the aorta, correct? And then you've got this wedge of enhancement. How many of you have done a liver biopsy? Have you seen this phenomenon before? If the patient did not die of the biopsy. <laughs> that, that happens. You know the first liver biopsy I did? The patient actually had hemoptysis. And then my attending said, you idiot. <laughs> Where do you think the needle is? I said, I swear it was in the liver. I said, he said, how did you mark it? I said, I asked the patient to take a deep breath in. And I marked it. And he said, then when you inserted the needle, did you do the same? I said, no, I forgot. Hmm? So he said, that is what happened. You forgot. You marked the place, you know, and then the patient is breathing. And he said, anyway, sorry. Didn't mean to distract you. But we all make mistakes. <laughs> we all make. So here is the lesion. Arterial phase. The lesion enhances. And look at the wedge-shaped, well-circumscribed. Can you draw this wedge out if you have a pencil? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does the lesion wash out? No. What happens to the wedge? I so intense. What do we think this is then? Look at its close proximity to the vein. What do we think this is? Post biopsy, what do patients get? Yes. This is an arterial pseudoaneurysm with a fistulous communication. And that is why you've got enhancement of the liver parenchyma, a sort of enhancement during arterial phase. What is the blood supply of the liver? Yes. And what is happening to this segment of the liver? It's 90% arterial. Correct? That is why it is enhancing to the same extent as the aorta. And the reason for that is because a, a, a pseudoaneurysm and a fistula was created due to the biopsy, which is a recognized you know, complication, and the blood supply was reversed because arterial is <coughs> pulsatile under pressure, and venous portal venous is not. So that is what is happening. So are we all happy about this lesion then? There's no washout, so it's not worrisome. And then we have a bio history of biopsy. Okay. What about this lesion? Can we draw it out? Not the circle, the actual lesion within the circle. <laughs> okay, this was a serotic. Look at the T2. The lesion is not visible. Sorry, this is covering the lesion, but on T1, pre-contrast, it is not visible. Arterial phase, it enhances. On the portal venous phase, do we see the lesion? No. So it is not washing out, correct? In a serotic, in subcapsular location, what do we get? We get AV shunting. And that is what is happening here. AV shunting. But again, the first thing is margin and the second thing is wash out. And this region is not washing out. So therefore it is not worrisome. Everybody with me? Agreed? Let's take the next region. What do we think this region is? Arterially enhancing, correct? Can you draw it out? Yes. Yes, you can draw it out, you know. So for the next set of cases, give me a strong response so that I know that whatever I am teaching or preaching is getting through. Okay, what do we do then? What do we think this lesion is? Look at all three images. That's a good thought, but what do you think is happening here? Look at this image. Two vessels coming together. It's a veno venous fistula. I got these, these images from here. Who did the biopsy on this patient? <laughs> no, I'm only joking. This is post-biopsy veno venous fistula. So you've always got to look at the 
all the set of images. And here you see two veins connecting. This is the hepatic vein, <coughs> right hepatic vein, and this is one of the branch of the right portal vein. And look at this. This is what is causing this fissure. Correct? Okay. Next lesion. Bad or good? <coughs> I need a good response, guys. It's ill circumscribed. Okay, ill circumscribed. Good. That's the way to play it safe. What do we think now? <laughs> I said good or bad. <laughs> Ill circumscribed. That was, that was a definitive answer. I know, man. I agree. I agree. My heart goes out to you. you know? Okay, what do we think is happening here? Does it wash out? This is the portal venous phase. Does it wash out? No. no. Exactly. Thank you. Look at the liver. The liver is cirrhotic, correct? The liver is cirrhotic. Who did the biopsy? <laughs> what do we think this is? A branch of the hepatic artery. And what is this? Portal vein filling. So what is this? A fistula. Arteriovenous fistula. This one was a venovenous fistula. This is an arteriovenous fistula. But they are all hyper-enhancing. But none of them demonstrate a washout. Agreed? Everybody with me? What are the two things you are going to remember after this lecture? <laughs> You'll definitely get into radiology. I'll put in a good word for you. Okay, more lesions. Are we ready? What do we think? Can we draw it out? Yes, we can draw it out. Correct? The lesion is heterogeneous, but if you take a pencil and draw a border of this lesion, can you draw it out? You can. What do we think is happening here? Oh, this is sorry, T2 weighted images. I need to correct this. So, this is T2 weighted images. This is pre contrast T1, arterial phase, and portal venous phase. What is happening? Septa within the lesion enhance, correct? What, how would you define this lesion on T2 weighted images? There are multiple fluid collections within the lesion, correct? What do you think it could be? Yes, go ahead, speak. Yeah. Yes, good thought, excellent. Excellent, guys, come on. That's a good thought. That's a good thought. Or any other abscess. Or any, I'll show you parasite as well. Next is parasite. But this is an abscess. You pick up the phone and you say, is the patient extremely sick? And they say, yes. And what do you say next? <laughs> Don't you think that history would have helped? They say, my job is not to make your life easy. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get into a lot of trouble with <laughs> That's why, you know what I do at work? I keep my mouth shut and act dumb. <laughs> rather than opening my mouth and proving it. <laughs> Here's another lesion. What do we think this lesion is? Look at the, look at the septation within these lesions and multiple well-circumscribed locules. Some of these locules actually you could draw out the individual locules. Look at this. Is there any washout? No? It's multiple fluid collections. What do we think it is? My Don't dad, look at each other. Guys. My dad says. Yes, perfect. Doesn't get any better than that. Who said that? You've got the eyes to heal. <laughs> you can just cure the patient by looking at the patient. I'm telling you. I am here to make you feel good. You know? <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> Not every legion has read the book. Be ready for surprises in life. Additional features. So, central scar, pseudocapsule and intracellular lipid. So these are the three things that you can or may encounter in a legion. Which three legions have a scar, FNH, hemangioma and fibrolamellar hepatocellular cancer? You know, sometimes I have difficulty pronouncing that. I just say FLHCC. 
Clinician asks, what do you mean by that? I say, Google it. <laughs> <Don't need> no <know> help. <laughs> FNH, high signal intensity scar on T2 weighted images which does not wash out. FLHCC, since it is a bad lesion, the scar is hypo intense because it can contain calcium. Some of it enhances and becomes hypo intense. See the scar? You can appreciate it on post CAD images, delayed images, that it does not blend in with the liver anymore, whereas, or the lesion itself anymore, whereas here it does. So that is how you distinguish fibrolamellar pedicellar cancer from FNH. Hemangioma, the scar is high signal intensity and does not wash out, and there is progressive filling in. You only see these in either sclerosed hemangiomas or giant hemangiomas. Everybody with me? Agreed? You know, I can see all the heads nodding. I'm going, I have uh, another presentation which has lesions which are not identified. So I'm going to ask you to identify. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> Pseudocapsule. Hepatocellular cancer or an adenoma? Which one do you think is HCC? The one on your left or one on your right? Okay. How many hands up for one on the left that think that this is HCC? That's a delayed phase image. Yes. Exactly. See, it's washing out. Correct? Well, look at it here. It blends in and has a pseudo capsule. This has a pseudo capsule too. Look at this. See? And this is a capsule too, or a pseudo capsule. And this actually capsule is enhancing, but the lesion itself blends in. Here the lesion washes out. Correct? The third category is lipid containing liver masses. Adenoma, HCC, and rarely FNH, liposarcoma, METS, lipoma, or AML. Which one do you think is HCC here? The one on your left. The two features. Apply the two features. Can you draw it out? Yes. It is heterogeneous. What are the reasons for an adenoma being heterogeneous? It can contain fat. It can contain hemorrhage. Correct? So while it is heterogeneous, can you draw it out? If you've got only one feature to rely on, then rely on that. If you've got two features to rely on, then rely on both. But the most worrisome is if the lesion is washing out. Look at this lesion here. Ill defined, correct? This was an HCC, this was an adenoma. What is happening here? My friend with the eyes which can heal. Oh, uh, that's drop out indicating presence of fat. Exactly. Now look at the vessels. You don't see the vessel here because of the fat within, within, within this area, but the vessel is going through it, correct? What do we think this is? A lesion would normally, if it was a lesion, it would displace the vessels, correct? Could just be a focal fat. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Doesn't get any better than that. There you go. Recommendations for indeterminate lesions on MRI. As I said, not every lesion has read the book. Check history, malignancy or chronic liver disease, if it is absent, likely benign. You can follow it up with anything. If it is present, if the history is present, then it is suspicious. You can do short term follow up or biopsy. In the setting of malignancy, MRI was more useful for excluding malignant lesions. Multiple publications have shown. The same in tabulated form. Goals of the Talk were imaging protocol. We discussed the imaging, imaging sequences. We discussed malignant versus benign, and we discussed specific diagnosis. <laughs> Is anybody named Dr. Norton here? So after this lecture, I hope none of you get nicknamed Dr. Norton. <laughs> Thank you.
Any questions? Does that mean you understood everything? <laughs> the other thing it could mean was you slept through the lecture. <laughs> Either way, I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Morton, what's up? Thank you very much.